This morning we are looking at, maybe this is the first part of this series, bridging the gap between the secular and the spiritual. I hear a lot of people say secular and they say secular. It's not secular, it's secular. Some people say that guy says secular music. And then when you tell them to spell it, they are spelling C I R C U. I have to see you. No, it's secular. Secular means anything that is not connected with religious or spiritual matters. Anything that is not connected. It's not connected with religious or spiritual matters. Praise God. Yeah. One word that somebody said to me when we were in university that troubled me for some time is the fact, he said that we can be 100% heavenly conscious and totally 100% utterly useless. One of the words that have been used to to trouble a lot of passionate christians is the word that you are so spiritual but you are not solving natural things so they will tell you things like well they don't go to church as much as they go to church in nigeria in the uk but they have human solutions for the lot of problems that they have all of you are processing to go to the UK. I'm very sure that you are not processing to go because you are moved by their spiritual experience. I am sure if you, and I'm not even sure most of you are processing because you have a sense of call. That's becoming like a past tense in our thinking. Mission is not, a, it's not in the forefront. What drives most of us to those places like Canada, like the UK, like the US, is what? It's human solutions. Human solutions that they have been able to mature. And many a times, it's as if the places that have the highest religious content have the lowest human solutions. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 17, when Israel was asking to be let go so that they can worship God, Pharaoh increased their body. And when they came to complain to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, You are idle, you are high do. Therefore, you say, Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. That is, most people who talk God, 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 God many a times are not occupied. So you understand that that accusation is not new. In fact, it was first recorded from the mouth of Pharaoh. That most of us are only spiritual because we are idle. Is that true? Talk to me. If that is true for you, that is not necessarily the truth in God. We are not following God because our hands are not full. We are following God because we are made to worship him. All things were made by him and for him and through him. Are we together? It's not because we are idle, like Pharaoh thought of Israel. It's because we know that we live in him, we move in him, and we have our being in him. Praise the Lord. Let me first run through certain things. I want you to know you can't put everything in life in the same basket. There are celestial things and there are terrestrial things. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39 to 41. 1 Corinthians 15, 39 to 41. 1 Corinthians 15. 39 to 41. I will need you to please rush because I have a lot of scripture to cover this morning. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of birds, of fish, another of birds. They are celestial bodies and they are 
terrestrial bodies. The glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. And verse 41 says, There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. The moon and the sun are both celestial bodies, but they don't carry the same glory. Isn't it? Are we together? The same way celestial things, that is things above this terra firma or this hard ground, they are different from terrestrial things. Are we together? So you can't put everything in the same basket. Listen, whether you like it or not, there are secular things and there are spiritual things. There are secular things, there are things that have not to do with religious experience. Some solutions that have been created in those nations are secular solutions. They are not necessarily spiritual solutions. Are we together? They are celestial and terrestrial things. They are natural and spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 44 to 47. 1 Corinthians 15, 44 to 47. They are natural and spiritual things. Go to verse 44. It is sown in a natural body. Is raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. Yes, yes, yes. So it is written, the first Adam became a living being, and the last Adam a life-given spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. Verse 47, the first man was of the earth, made of dust, the second man is the Lord from heaven. In that place we saw there is a natural man and there is what? A spiritual man. Are you following me? Scriptures made us to know there are things seen and there are things unseen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 told us by faith we understand that the things which are made and the things which are seen were made from the things which are not visible. So there are things which are visible and there are things which are not visible. Hebrews 11, 3. He buttresses it again in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 told us that we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Tell your neighbor, there are things which are seen and there are things which are not seen. Uh, why we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen? For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are not seen are eternal. So in other words, there are temporal things and there are eternal things. Are we together? Now, we don't all have the same experience of, of temporal things. All the things that they have in the UK, they don't have in Nigeria, are not necessarily spiritual things. They are still temporal things. Because they are things that are seen. Are we together? And so sometimes when you put everything in the same basket and say, well, they have it and we don't, and we are spiritual and we don't have anything. You have forgotten that the things which are seen are temporal and the things which are not seen are eternal. We might be dwelling uh, in the things which are not seen that are eternal and their own focus in the things which are seen. And I'm not giving an excuse for the lack of development that is happening in our place. It's evident why there is no development and you are part of the solution when you get your PVC. Say amen. amen. Uh, so they are celestial and terrestrial things. They are natural and spiritual things. They are seen and unseen things. They are temporal and eternal things. There's a whole difference between the defense that money gives you and the defense that wisdom gives you. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12. Bible says wisdom is a defense, money is a defense, but the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. True, wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but there is a place where wisdom stands out from money, that it gives life. In fact, the Bible told us about money in Ecclesiastes eleven nineteen that feast is made for a laughter, but it is money that answers all things. Money creates a feast, but does not create appetite. Are you following me? Like they told us that money can buy you a bed, but it can't give you sleep. Are you following me, church? So it's, it's, now, are people with money defended? Yes, money is a defense. 
Are people with wisdom defended? Yes, wisdom is a defense. But there is a place where they differ. And if we are a people that will understand life very well, we must know the difference between the secular and the spiritual. That's all I've been trying to say, that uh, there's a, there are celestial and terrestrial things, there are natural and spiritual things, seen and unseen things, temporal and eternal, the defense of money and defense of wisdom. There's a wisdom from above and there's a wisdom from beneath. James chapter 3, verse 13 to 18. There's a wisdom from above and there's a wisdom from the beneath. James 3 from verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. Is it wisdom? Is it wisdom? But is it from above? This wisdom is not from above, but it is earthly. It is sensual and demonic. Verse 16. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Glory to God. Verse 18. He said, now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So in that place, he showed us that even not all descriptions of wisdom are the same. They are both called wisdom, but there's one that is earthly, that is sensual, that is demonic. And there's one that is above, that is peaceable, that is easy to you, that is bears the fruit of righteousness. We will make a lot of mistakes in life when we put everything in the same basket. Are you following me? Are you following me? Riches is not wisdom. We have seen fools who are kings. So don't automatically think that because somebody does not have something you think he should have, that means he doesn't have some spiritual content. No, he doesn't. Are we together? People think that everything about spiritual life is only reflected in the tangible. There are things seen. There are things unseen. Are we together? I hope you can believe that. I go back to Jonah chapter 1. I want you to travel with me in your imagination to the port where Jonah took the ship that morning. God spoke to Jonah, go to Nineveh and proclaim to them my word. But Jonah went to Joppa to take a ship. Now, maybe the one that can strike home close for us is like if you visit an airport. And in the waiting lounge, everybody's waiting to hear their flight call. It's easier to see people preaching the gospel in a motor park than in, at an airport. Have you noticed? Why? Because the airport is a place for very busy people. In fact, sometimes we have to occupy your time because your vehicle had not moved in the motor park. In fact, there are people that say their ministry is to go to the motor parks and be preaching to people and be collecting offering. Very strange ministry. But I hardly see those type of ministries at the waiting lounge of an airport. In the airport, because especially now, we have flight between Ibadan, between Lagos and Abuja, it's about 300,000 naira. By the time I call for 300,000 for a one hour flight return ticket, yes, that's how bad it is now. People want to invite you now, they think well. Somebody that must have taken 300,000 out of his hand to buy a ticket, he must be going for something serious. Have you ever had a hardly morning flight before? 6 a.m. See, people are already there. Because some of them have a meeting by 9. 
So everything, every moment is important. You know, you hardly see people talk religious things there. Because they are busy. Are we together? So Jonah, in the days of Jonah, the port, the seaport was where people who want to go do business gather. So Jonah joined them. Jonah was a spiritual man with a mandate from God to preach to Nineveh, but he was going to Tarshish. And if you read your Bible, Tarshish is a commercial merchant city. In case there was any discussion at the port that morning, it would have been, what is the current exchange rate? It would have been how much gold they exchange for how much of silver. Those, if, if those type of discussions are happening, are you following me? It's like when you end up playing and you're, I'm a lawyer, oh, God, can I get your card? You know, a lot of people try to do as if they are even more than they are, they are flying and suspended. You get those type of discussions more. I'm, I'm just, I have a business to, to undo in Abuja. That's, you know, I'm going to return in the evening. Everybody looks very serious. That was the way it was at Jopa that morning. And everybody just entered the ship. How many of you feel this world would be easier if our relationship with God is private? And we don't put it before the face. Have you ever had people say things like, your relationship with God is between you and God. Don't put it before people's face. Because occasionally some people have troubled others by trying to show that they are spiritual. It's as if the world is calm when we, it is secular. Have you noticed? Where, have, have you ever had that argument that how many of you have ever asked if the pilots fly your plane is born again? Talk to me. If I go fly your plane and I was not trained, and you know pastor is at the helm, how many of you will be at rest? And you know I trained as an accountant. Yeah. Good morning. This flight is going to take us one hour between here and Abuja. I am tired, Harry. I'm a pastor, but I'm flying by faith. How many of you will sit down? Eh? But if he says, my name is Abdul Malik Abdul Rahman, well trained from the something something school of aeronautics, and it's my pleasure to welcome you on this flight. How many of you will settle down? Or he calls his name Rajik Sh Sh Rasfanesh from India. You don't know whether his God is an elephant. Because in Hinduism, they have 300 million gods. They worship anything. Seriously. How many of you think that the world will be quiet and easier without religious connotations? Tell me the truth. Hmm? Eh? Because religion has caused wars. How many of you know what I'm saying? They've been killing their children in the Middle East for thousands of years in the name of God. Islam fighting Christianity, Christianity fighting Islam, it Judaism standing between. I say, yeah, you people don't even, and they, you know, there's a, there's, 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 there, there, there's a pact Israel signed with the United Arab Emirates and I think Jordan recently. Do you know what the, the name of the pact? They call it the Abraham Accord. Do you know why they call it the Abraham Accord? Because the three religions fighting, they are claiming the same father. Aya. Abraham is the father of faith for Christianity. Abraham is Ibrahim, the father of Islam. Abraham is the father of Judaism, and yet their children are fighting. So they are trying to gather them. So I was meditating last night. I said, is there a place to gather them all together in Abraham? Then I remember in Abraham, all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because I wanted to say it should be Jesus' accord. Because the Bible says in him, all things consist. But I discovered that Jesus is the son of Abraham. So let's look at whether it will work. But those are attempts of the flesh trying to do spiritual things. But that's not even my focus. Now, if people just get more fruitful with their religious life and less trying to change people, 
or convert people. Because this, what do you call it? Protestalizing or trying to convert people into your religion is the foundation for many crises in the world. Have you noticed? Some of you feel the world will be so simple. Everybody just believed their own God. And that was how it was at Joppa that morning. Everybody entered into their own cabin thinking of their business. What am I going to go do in Tashish? And the journey started smoothly. Then verse 4 said, The Lord sent a storm. That's when you discover that people are not necessarily truly secular. When there is no problem, everybody does as if, you know, that God thing is just. All those guys you saw there had their gods. It was just somewhere inside their pocket. Keep, don't let people keep lying to you. I have seen CEOs going in the night to one man washing their head inside river. They come in the morning with suit. Good morning. I just finished the training in advert. Go ask the politicians who are contesting. You will be amazed the places they are putting their heads now that you can never imagine. Some people that never went to school are controlling what they are doing. Show fed that, eh? Come back to the 30. They will come. When the storm came, the mariners were afraid. Every man cried down to to what? Yeah. So they have their God. It's all makeup. To make it, see, your storm will reveal who your God is. So the Bible says they all came. In fact, I'm running ahead of myself. When Jonah got to the port, he just paid his fear. He didn't pray. Did you notice? How many of you feel life would be that simple? Just pay your fear. When Jonah got there, he just, he just took money, gave it to the man, and was on his way. How many of you know that if God gives you some money, there are certain things that will not be prayer? Did you hear? And Jonah knelt down. Say, God, make a way. Eh? Look at it. Jonah arose to flee from Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fear. As long as you pay the fear, you have a right to board. Nobody asked him, who is your God? Many of them, everything is God, God, God things. Because things are not sufficient. Though. If you have money, there are things you will not pray for. How many of you know that if you have money, and you have some money now, you decide, I want to have my child in the UK. I want to have it in the US. Huh? They say, okay, no, no, you know it's going to cost you about $20,000. I said, put it on mine. And that's it. You say, well, pastor, I'm trusting God. But somewhere in your heart, your heart is not, because you know you are not going to UCH. And you know that you are not going, there's very low probability of a strike. We are, are, that's not a nation where people have been on strike for six months and government is begging parents to bring teachers to call off strike. He just paid his fear. Uh, wouldn't life be that simple? Have your God in your heart, have sufficiency in your hand, and move on. Isn't that, will life not be that just organized? <laughs> Jonah paid his fear until the storm came. Then everybody tried crying to their God. Because most people, even most of us here, we want a world where faith is just principally private. In, in Psalm 10 verse 4, Psalm 10 verse 4, coming somewhere again, the wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. 
That's what is called circular. It's not about God. Don't, don't say God, God, God. All of you saying God, God, God. Get your direction. Get your fear. Pay your way through and go where you are going. God is not in his thoughts. Psalm 2 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 2 verse 1 to 3. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Whose bonds and whose cords? The bonds and the cords of the Lord and his anointed, the Lord and his Christ. This is the natural craving of human beings. They just feel like this God thing is an inhibition. Are you following me? Are you following me? Yes, sir. People even tell you religion is what is not allowing science to move at the pace it should move. When somebody says today that he wants to clone a human being, the first set of people that are going to stand against that man are faith people. Okay. For many years, even church did not allow blood transfusion until reasoning overtook some of our persuasions. And people were dying, and they, and they were dying, and they were burning there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some people were not taking COVID vaccine recently until they knocked down the homophobic meal. <laughs> because sometimes if you are not careful and if you don't understand God very well it might look like the reason of God in your life is even a cord and a bond that limits you from full expression are you following me sometimes very religious places are hardly very highly developing places one of the reasons why Africa has a lot of problems it's a, it's a priest tribe. If you go to every African society, it's a very deeply religious society. Where, where, even if they are traditional people. The one small village last week, one small street, two kings were fighting. The king of Akure said that he's doing one festival that they must not open market the king of another street said our own market will open. you cannot come africans can't hit yam until there's new yam festival one of the reasons why i never like going to my hometown my hometown can wait to hit new yam in december i've seen it before <laughs> If you have never been in places where people have taboos and culture, you don't understand the inhibitions those things can put on development. And many a times, even when people came into Christianity in Africa, they still brought their syncretic attitudes with it. Are you following me? Uh, this looks like a lecture, but I will train you today. Because we will bridge the gap. I thought you would say better, amen. amen. And so... They said, let's cast away their cards. These guys are not even helping us. Let's just move on. And that was what was happening at Joppa that morning at the port. God was taken to the background so that people could determine logically the things they wanted to do until the storm came. And everybody started calling their God. And when they were calling their God, the Bible said they found Jonah sleeping. What do you mean? How many of you know you are not this composed? It is because there is no storm. If you are in a, if you have ever been in a plane and there is turbulence, and some of those those pilots are very wicked people. They say we are having minor turbulence. What is minor about this? Because you automatically just imagine coming down from thirty three thousand feet or more. Have you fallen down from two-story building before? 
And the pilot said, you know, we are just having some minor turbulence. You see, <laughs> if it have ever happened to you, because I think I've been in one, everybody just get quiet. Some people are emotional, because you afraid this is ah, because you just remember your two year old at the Malachaye Progodo Sitaba, and then Brady. Oh, I love you, 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 I love you. Your storm, how this your composure? You've not seen storm. When storm comes, you will know that that thing you think is not in your thought, God is there. Is there? It's written in your heart. <laughs> Why are you sleeping? You have told you call on your God. And then they call they say, they say, let's cast lot. Who is the person causing this thing? That looks like Africa. Or oh, what did you? <laughs> I used to tell people in this part of the world, ah, shake back, boy, what did I that's why when you go to church and the pastor puts faith in your heart, does not suffice you until they say, you know, the reason why you have this problem, they, your father has two wives. Is, then is a, that's when you come alive. You never come alive when faith is being put in you. You come alive when reasons for your crisis is being shown. But I'm not here to do what I'm here for you to believe. He said, Lord, what shall we do to do the works of God? He said, this is the work of God that you believe. I'm here not to show you things about who is troubling you, but for you to believe that God is on your side. And if God is on your side, who can be against you? Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, so it's, uh, it's my grandmother. It's, ah, it's the community my great -great grandmother married from. Ah, it's coming back. It's coming back. There is nobody here who does not have a foundation in the occult, in your, in your history. Nobody. Then let nobody come and be troubling you. You are in Christ. If a man be, uh, I'm not hearing you preach to me. If a man be, is a new, all things have passed away. Behold, enforce it. Deliberately, because you are new. Somebody say amen. amen. In Acts chapter 27, from verse 9 to 12. Acts 27, verse 9 to 12. It was Paul again. Now, when more time has been spent and sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was already over, Paul advised them. What did he advise? Man, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only to the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than the things spoken by Paul. Because I said, hey, you people brought your religion again. Just went to the owner of the ship. What type of wood made this ship? So it was well researched. It's light when there is storm, you know, water can't penetrate it. Just look at Paul. You people spiritualize everything. A good voyage is largely determined by who is your helmsman and what type of ship you are moving in. Isn't it? Talk to me. To most of you, yeah, where you are going to end is largely determined by which country you are living. <laughs> A lizard in Nigeria will not become an alligator in the U.S. Put it inside play. Let it land in JFK. If it comes out, it's lizard. You don't believe it. Say, <laughs> I'm not against you traveling. But I'm saying that somewhere in your conclusion, this centurion, just look at Paul. You spirit. Pause. They said, Paul, give us the empirical evidence for what you are saying. He said, I perceive. He said, I perceive. How can I follow somebody who perceives against somebody who gives me 
empirical evidence of why the ship will get to where it's going. If America tells you 2 million people die of COVID, you know they are, they are not lying. If Nigeria tells you 75,000, you know that 1 million have died. We don't have any study here. No statistics is here. He said we are over 200 million people. Over, we have never been able to determine how much we are. The last census in Nigeria is 2006. Yeah, yeah, you are preparing in, in, in imagination. That's why when they tell you that more, they brought 5 million votes from a place, you cannot dispute it because we don't even know our number. We don't even know who Nigerians are. Because we are making rail to Niger now. We don't even know where our borders end. The reason why those people have a chance of making it, they have more empirical studies, but what do we have? Our God is able to supply. All I need. According to his riches and glory. So, Bungkodo Shele, Ulu Asha Ma Adroti Wa. Ninu, Ninu, Ayri, Ino, Ulu Adroti Wa. You know what I'm talking about. That, that's your Paul. There's a Paul. Stop saying these things. So, they got into the water. We are comparing two stats here. Clear empirical evidence and somebody's perception. And sometimes when you want to say the perception, so you remember Gideon. Somebody say, is Gideon, is Gideon in 2022? The problems David have, we don't have. I mean, talk, talk. From people who want to tell you the Bible is an outdated book. That there are situations that have happened in the world today that were not envisaged by the Bible. Are you following And because the arbor was not suitable to winter, the majority advice, somebody say the majority. To set sail from there. If by any means they could reach Phoenix and harbor of Crete, opening towards the southwest and northwest in the winter there, and you know the story, the Bible says, when the south wind blew softly, supposing they have obtained their desire, putting out the sea, they sailed close by Crete. I mean, the first wind that blew was so soft. See? Then the Bible says, not long after that, a tempestuous head wind arose. They called that one Euroclidion. The Bible says, when that one started blowing, the Bible says it blew them so much that for days they did not see the sun. I've heard it that it is possible to be on the sea. There's a place you can be, there's a realm you can be on the sea, you won't see the sun. That's when you know that the earth is really spread. It's not, it's not flat. There are proofs of geology. I mean, I mean, don't let's go there. They didn't see the sun, they didn't see the star. They were just, uh, the Bible says all hope to live, to survive was gone. Then Paul came again. He said, I warned you people not to set sail, but you didn't believe. He said, but there appeared an angel of God to me. Now this man is about, suddenly faith is beginning to have meaning now than empirical evidence. Because you are in the midst of the sea where you can't see the sun. The first place he said it, they were on the ground. Are you following me? But now they were where they just have to hang on to something, and there was nothing else in the physical to hang on to. So he told them, An angel of the Lord stood by me. And the angel of the Lord said, Well, there, there shall be no loss of life, but there will be loss of sheep. In the beginning, Paul told them, Paul gave them the best deal. He said, If we don't set sail, if we set sail, there will be loss of lives and the loss of our goods. But they didn't believe. But God in his infinite mercy now said, okay, there will be loss of sheep and loss of goods, but there will not be loss of lives. He said to them, and I believe that it will be as he said. Because it's the angel of the God whom I serve to whom I belong. Did you hear the centurion argue with Paul again? Suddenly, everybody. Now, sometimes we, 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 okay, we are not necessarily secular, but we I can accommodate a pluralistic society. The first picture we had of Joppa when Jonah entered was a secular picture. Nobody talked about God. The next picture we had when the storm rose was everybody was talking about their own God. That is what is called pluralism. I, I'm showing you developments of time. 
Then, so the, because the problem of some people is that there is no God. The problem of some people is that you say Jesus is the way. They will just want you to say he is a way. But all until they die, everybody long, long, long more. The reason why they call Jonah is not because they believe in his God. It's call your God. We are calling our own God. You get what I'm talking about? And most of you are like that. It's like, come, come on, shut down. Which you know me. Come on, shut down. Yeah. So when one man said, oh, go carry a ram. He said, it don't matter, Nikki. But we no. He don't share any solution. My God is not a many God. There is one God. When Jonah looked at them, Jonah said, listen, you have moved from, plural, from secularism to pluralism, when I tell you, but I am on Hebrew. I serve the God who made the heaven and the earth, the dry sea, the dry land and the sea, which means there is no other space left to any other. If you, is it that you're engaging or you're engaging? Are you following me? Because other gods, you will hear of the god of the river. Then at a point, you will hear of the god of fire. And you will hear of the god of thunder. But God, who is God? Is God. God of river. God of sea. God of dry ground. God of economic crisis. God of prosperity. Is God. He's just the same. Are you following me? I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. He has been relevant even when we were on the shore in Joppa. He's not a God we start calling because we're in the midst of storm. He's not just the God of the seas, the God of the dry land. I pray that you would have known him even before the crisis comes. Because the God you don't know in the dry land might not suddenly answer on you. In the raging sea. Uh, you didn't get what I just said. A lot of people are waiting for crisis to know God. May the Lord help you. In Acts 17 from verse 16, Acts 17 from verse 16, Paul said, while he waited at Athens, he saw the people, the Bible says his spirit was provoked, he saw so many altars. So many altars. Some people, they are not secular, but they just keep having all manner of God. That's Athens. But he saw one altar, so what? The unknown God. And he said to them, this one that you don't know. Because if you have known him, you will not have had many other altars. If you have known him, you would have had only one altar. Do you know why? He began to tell them, he said, that God you worship, ignore that. He's the one I want to talk to you. He's the one who made everything. Go to, go to verse. Uh, uh, let, let me get that verse. When Paul began to show them the unknown God. Uh, go to verse 20 now. Let me see. Paul said, they're bringing straight things to our head. Therefore, we want to know these things. Verse 21. All the Athenians and foreigners spend their time in nothing else but to either to tell or to hear something new. Some new thing, yeah. Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus. Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship. I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God. Someone say God. God. Not the God of fire. He's God. He's, he, he doesn't need anything to be God. He's just God. In the beginning, God. There was nothing made. It was God, God who made the world and what? Everything in it. Since he's the Lord of what? Heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands. He's not worshipped by men's hands as though he needed anything. He gives to all life, breath, and all things. That's why you can't trap him and describe him with something. He's described in everything. Are you following me? I say it's described in everything. He made from one blood every nation. Everybody has their source in him. And 
to dwell on the face of the earth, he had determined the pre-appointed times and boundaries of the habitation. He said, this is the unknown God that you have been worshipping ignorantly. A time is going to come when your storm comes. It will, not be about, it will not be about ideas. It will be about effectiveness. Before the storm came, everybody had their own God. Did you remember in that story that they begged Jonah, so what shall we do? Jonah said, throw me over. At the end of that chapter, the Bible said they raised an altar and sacrificed to God. Where were their gods? Because when your storm comes, it won't be about the ideas you cherish. It will be about what is effective. Are you following me? It won't be about, okay, I was born in, I cannot leave this church. It will be about is God alive enough to be revealed when the storm strikes. It's not about your ideas, it's about effectiveness. It's about the God who answers by fire. First Kings 18, 21 to 24. Oh Israel, why are you between two opinions? If God is God, follow him. If bad is God, follow him. But the God who answers by fire, let him be God. I have good news for you today. Jonah said, I serve the God of heaven and earth. If you throw me into the river, the sea will become, my God has an effect. I said, my God has an effect. My God is not an idea. My God is not, the, it's not, the, it's not, it's not, it's not created by human fables. My God is not created by intelligence of human wisdom. Are you following me? In fact, my God is the one who has prepared all things for them that love him. It's not the one we prepared. He's the one who prepared all things for us. Somebody say Amen. So he said, the God who hears us by, who answers by fire. My God is the one who hears prayer. Psalm 65 verse 2. Psalm 65 verse 2. Please. Oh, you who hear prayer to you, what? All flesh will come. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's the God of your father or the God of your mother. Whether they know him in your family or not. When storms come, it is the one who hears prayer. Are you following me? That will go to. And I tell you, Jesus said, I should tell you, whatsoever you ask in my name, my father will give it to you. What is he saying? I am the God who hears prayer. And the God who hears prayer is the only one that all flesh should come to. Uh, you are not following me this morning. I say it's the God who hears prayer. And you will come. Who is part of the flesh drawing to God today? He will hear your prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's the God who made ears and can hear. Psalm 94 verse 8 and 9 said, He who made ears, will he not hear? And in Psalm 115, verse 1 to 8, he said, Idols. He said, They have ears, but they do not hear. They have eyes, but they do not see. He said, Those who trust in them are like them. They become very insensitive. Nothing can change. Psalm 115, verse 1 to 8. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. But our God is not an idol. I said, It's a living God. I said, It's a living God. Please, somebody, please speed up those things. I'm, you are dragging me. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 to 11, the Bible spoke about the idols who did not make the heavens and the earth. I think in verse 11 it said, Here, every God who did not make the heaven and the earth shall perish under the heavens. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 10. Thus shall you say to them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from under the heaven. So listen, we are going to move away from being secular, from being pluralistic, to a point where we will have to answer to the God who made everything. Because he's the only one that can change the story. Suddenly, everybody forgot their own God. Everybody focused on Jonah. Because it's only Jonah's God that can show up in the storm. May your God be able to show up in the storm. May your ideas be able to keep you when crisis come. You see, a lot of people are strong until something happens. You know, me, I'm not moved. You know me, I have self-control. Some people's God is their self-control. They say, nothing moves me. It's because what will move you has not come. 
when what will move you will come, may you have somebody you can stretch out your hands to. Ah, I'm telling you. I say, Lord, hold my hands. Hold my hands. I have a PhD, but I'm sinking under grip of education. This guy that is just a tailor is confusing my family. Look, oh, tailor needs to me, but every time I see her, I can't hold myself. I can't control myself. I want to think because you know, because you don't have God. Do you know how many people have ridiculed the entire journey and fame for something stupid? They cannot even understand that they came to it. When your storm comes, you will know how valid and effective your God is. Some people's God is their name. Some people's God is their school. You know, I came up from Harvard. I'm running something in Oxford. Uh, when kidney stone hits a man, you don't know whether he went to Harvard. May your God answer in the day of trouble. May your God remember your sacrifices. I thought somebody would say better. Amen. For the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, they will perish under the earth. Faith. This is where faith comes from. We've moved from secularism to pluralism. Now we are coming to faith. Faith reveals who your God is. Psalm 107 verse 23 to 32. Psalm 107 verse 23 to 32. I'm almost getting into the message. Hallelujah. If you are getting some, say I'm getting it. If you are confused, say I'm confused. Okay. Those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters, those are the people going to Tarshish. They see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. He commands and raises the stormy winds which leaps off the waves of the sea. Some of you will go to Bar Beach, you will see a wave coming. Say, hey, hey, wave. That's not wave. Have you seen tsunami before? Tsunami crashed almost story buildings. A tsunami hit and killed 800,000 people from Asia to Africa. One, one storm. Uh, you have not seen storm. There are storms that are taller than ships. In Chile, he said, hey, you know, we went to Agudi. He said, it's all water. <laughs> you've not seen water or you went to a beach Atlantic Ocean is one of the most peaceful oceans in the world I'm telling you it doesn't have trouble go to Pacific have you ever a tornado cyclone we don't have any of those winds here we just sit down here we go to a beach in America there is what is called tornado season they're expecting it you know you are building this year it will break next year so that's why they have insurance business insurance so in short, because tornado will break it. So that. <laughs> but you know, you, you can build the air. You only fear rain. Even in the bad, if your gutter is well, you might not have any problem. They mount up to the heavens, they go down to the step. Their soul melts because of trouble. Ah, there, is a, there, is, there are some troubles that melt people. And all the front they have that they are, you know, they, this is my God, is in my heart. It will stop being in their heart. It will be in their mouth. It will be in their face. It will be in their talk. It will be everywhere they are going. Are you following me? They real to and fro. They stagger like drunken men. They are their wit's end because of a storm. You know, what did they do? They cry out to the Lord. May you have a God that can hear your voice. They cry out to the Lord in their trouble. He brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that his waves are still. They are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired heaven. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 32, let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elder. All that men will give thanks to the Lord. Because many times people will not know it's the Lord that is at work until the storm comes. Until, before the storm, they just go down to the sea to do business. But when the storm came and they did all they could do, and the only thing that worked was that they cried out to God, then they started praising God for his goodness. There are so many things happening to you this morning you are taking for granted that you don't know is the goodness of God. It's when storms come that you will know is the goodness of God. 
Are you following me? You can take them casually and say, well, they are, they are expected to work. Who told you your plans are expected to work? Who told you your ideas are expected to work? They are not automatic. It's God who makes things to work. Are you following me? And the Lord will hear your cry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus revealed himself as a God you can trust in storms. In Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, they were on the sea. And there was a storm. And he too was sleeping. But it's better than Jonah. And they woke him up and said, don't, 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 are you not, are you not troubled that we are going to perish? Is that the place? Mark. Sorry, it's Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. So they said, let's cross over. I said, I, they began to tell him, are you not troubled that we shall perish? And he looked at them, why are you of little faith? And he rose up and rebuked the wind. And when he rebuked the wind, there was great calm. Jesus will rebuke the winds for you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. When they were going to the sea, the first thing that was on their mind is, oh, what type of sheep are we taking? That's the secular mindset. But when the storm came, is who is the God who will I call to? Uh, crisis is one of the things that bridge the gap between the secular and the spiritual. Because that untouched part of you will be called to demand. Are you following me, church? You give somebody money, he says it's coming back, and suddenly you're now hearing for the person for two days. And his number is not reachable. You just suddenly discover. Have you ever sent money and as it left your account, something told you, oh Lord, Niel. <laughs> what it buy? You can, you can, it left, but you can't pull back. And in five minutes, you are totally troubled. Storms reveal. When you are taking that decision, sending money, you, why are you asking God? You are just taking logical decisions. What is the return? What's the ROI on the investment? Oh, you have not bought land in Epe. Epe is the new city. Oh, and what's the ROI? You are buying until suddenly the money left and something told you. Your money and the land. <laughs> but thanks be to Jesus, he can wake up for you. Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. He showed himself again in that same dimension in Matthew 14, 22 to 33. The Bible says the disciples were on the sea and there was a storm almost overwhelming them. Then Jesus saw them and they began to walk on the sea towards them. He began to walk on the sea towards them. And Peter said, if you are the one, Lord, let me come. And he said, come. And when Peter was coming, he started looking at the wind and he began to sink. And Jesus said, and he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord stretched his hand. I need a God who can stretch out. I don't need an idea. When things are together, ideas work. But when storms come, I need the one who can show up. I need a very present help in the time of trouble. Are you, are you following? I need the one who can forgive sins. How many of you have had an error before that you couldn't forgive yourself? I mean, you could just have just overlooked it yourself and moved on. But something, even, even though you are the one that did it, you need somebody outside you to say, I overlook it. Why couldn't you say to yourself, I overlook it? Because we are all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Our judgment is not in ourself. And it's not of ourself. Are you following me? I need somebody that can tell you, it is forgiven. Who needs to hear that voice? I need somebody that can tell me it's forgiven. I need somebody that can tell me I've overlooked it. I need somebody that will tell you I will do a new thing. I need somebody that will tell me I'm with you even to the end of the age. That's when you bridge the gap between this secular reasoning and the spiritual because they are not the same. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Miracles are different from therapy. Miracles will happen to you. Yeah. Miracles are different from motivation. 
I said, you are going there. It's going to work for you. But there is a difference between God said that your future is sure. Then I'm, I'm just don't worry, just hope. But I'm not here to just give you motivation. I'm here to give you a swore word of prophecy. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. That's enough to change your mood. That's enough to change your attitude. That's enough for you to carry everything you are going through today lightly because it will be well. I thought you would say a better amen. amen. I said it will be well amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. The secular brought us great human solutions. Psalm 104 from verse 19 to 24. Psalm 104 from verse 19 to 24. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it's going down. Who makes darkness and what? It is night in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. Young lions roar after their prey. They seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Verse 23. Man goes out to his what? is work. The sun rises and it gives man opportunity to what? To go out and create solutions for problems. But what man forget is that somebody created that working environment. In the night, he made sure that it's a night for creeping things that will be awful to man to come out. In the day when men need to walk, he makes sure that those things are out of place. If somebody will set all these things in order, it's not our intelligence. But the truth of the matter is that when the day arrives, man goes to his work. I'm telling you, there are things that will be solved by man. Are you okay? You are part of the people to send to bring some creative solutions to human lives. Man rises with light to solve things. Are you following me? Actually, but what are you solving today? Stop just earning and eating and drinking and, and, and living. Man rises with light and goes to his work. What's your work? Work is a blessing. I said, work is a blessing. God will give you work. I'm not saying body. I say work. The Bible says, he that does not, he that, he that used to, uh, he that does not work among you, let him work so that he can have something to give to the poor. Work is a platform for solutions that God wants you to contribute to. Work. Some of you, your work space is what gave you the skills you have today. If you did not work in that line, you will not have those skills. Your work is going to add some value to you. That's why God created today. Today is to add some value to you. Some of you need to pick some new courses, some new uh, professional courses. Some of you need to add to yourself. It's nothing bad. It is what rises with the day. When the day rises and light breaks, a man rises and the first instinct in man is something must be solved. The human solutions. Some people are somewhere today thinking, can we reduce the time flight between America and, and, and the UK? What can we do? What can one modifications can we do? And the modifications have their challenges. Look at the Boeing 7, 737 Max. Is it Max? Boeing Max. They were trying to create solutions. It brought so many crashes. They lost dear people to it. But human beings are never part of because human beings know that it is this true trial and error that they will touch what they will touch, and they will touch it. Are you following me? Tomorrow morning, there is a there is there is a, a lunar a lunar what do they call it? Capsule going to the going to the moon, going to the space tomorrow morning. But you see, you know how many capsules burnt in the air for that to be possible. Men never get tired of looking for solutions. And sometimes because they are wired in this way, they tell me, don't mention God. They become guinea pigs looking for solutions. They just rise. Human, secularism, secular things, not connected with religious matters or spiritual matters, have solved issues for men. But sometimes it has created blindness for men. 
Because let me ask you a question. If we do all these things and it has no meaning, it has nothing, it doesn't add up to purpose, what is the use of it? In Isaiah chapter 22, verse 12 to 13, we saw the human blindness that it brings. Verse 12 and 13. Isaiah 22, 12 and 13. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for what? Mourning. For badness, for guarding with sackcloth. That's describing God is calling for repentance. God is calling for people to give him attention. But instead, joy, gladness, slaying oxen, killing sheep, eating and drinking wine. For they say, let's eat and drink. For tomorrow, we die. Let's eat and drink. God, do you know why God called for money? God, and God called for repentance. God was calling for those things because of things that will happen after they die. Because there is a world beyond death. But they occupied themselves with things of this life that way and they became so delusional and they said well, what is it about life we are my muti long amo so what did they say ya koko mumbi no human solutions as powerful as they are can't explain the philosophy of life because somewhere somewhere it does not just make everything hard up so people just come into excess again and say, let's eat and drink. For tomorrow, we die. Are you still following? Without God, all our efforts are in vain. Do you know how many things people have done in this world thinking they've so solved? Look at how Russia has taken Ukraine back in, in six months. There were people who, who gave their time and energy and skill to improve that economy, to build that system, and they thought they've created eternal solutions. And one person just came up one day. Do you know what it means to build a nuclear power plant? So one of my friends said, the day they said they are building it in Nigeria, that's the day it's going out of this country. Because a nuclear, design, you know, we, we, can, we can't even mine hydroelectric. So when they say nuclear plant, um, she waves here in the Benin Republic. <laughs> because I can, a, a nation that can't manage university system, she never think of going to nuclear power. They will die. I'm telling you the truth. Our telecom, hello, somebody was calling me last yesterday from two houses away. Ha-ha? Uh -huh. Is that? Then they like, no, we want to set up nuclear power. Please encourage them not to. The hour has not come. Let's use gas. Let's use gas. <laughs> Nigeria. But that's not even my focus. My focus is people created these things, they made it their religion, and they told themselves that as long as they contributed effectively to humanity, life has meaning. Are you following me? Yes, so later I discovered that what they built their entire life with is not eternal. It's not something that we even stand for. Even in time, it becomes destructive. Uh, destructible. In time, it's de some of them, before even they die, what they use their life for, is destroyed before them. Are you following me? If some of our leaders who fought for independence wakes up, did they fight? Did they go to prison? Talk to me. Some of them died. If they woke up to discover that this is what they died for. Hmm? That your campaign will be a milocone, a milocone. About we do eh? I will love with the E.
Anthony Ayaro was 30 something years old when he called for the independence of Nigeria. The 30 something year olds of Nigeria today can't stream five paragraphs together clearly. It's good to live for those things, but I tell you, secularism will never ultimately give your life a meaning. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3 said, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, who is there? My God, we need to learn this thing. So somewhere some people say, this message is long. They are the people making it long. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I do not have love, it profits me nothing. Listen, contributing to humanity without having the love of God is nothing. How can you give your body, your goods to feed the poor? Because the poor tomorrow can come back in their empowerment and kill you. Feeding the poor does not change the poor. That's why the mission of the church is not to us to feed people who are the poor. It's to feed them and to preach the gospel to them. People go from churches to churches trying to collect money. They say, church is the house of our father. The reason why our father is there is, open your ears, oh Israel, the Lord your God is one. The only thing I can give you that will remain with you is the gospel of Christ. If I give you money today, it will disappear. Nobody should come and blame me and say, ah, and they did not carry the entire offering and give to me. That's not their mission. Because if I give you money, and I even bond my body, when we came to this street, ha, ah, Kanga, thank you. Thank you for making bridge for us. Then they, they are beginning to gossip now. If that is what we live for, if we become an immaterial agency, Red Cross, Red Crescent, Say, Pastor, ha, and they got to feed them when you Pastor, ha, and it, those things are good, but if you do them without love, they are nothing. God is love. If God is not presented to people, the ultimate of love is not yet revealed. I didn't hear what I just said there. If God is not presented to people, the ultimate of love is not yet revealed. So, listen, it's our mission to take the knowledge of God to the nations of the earth. Somebody say, Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, let me give you a final story as a tile. Showing you that your crisis will reveal your God. And bridge the gap between this, your secular solution system and your faith. Rolling out thousands of, just, ju uh, of, of lawyers in a year is not what brings justice to a land. Or more, there's no phone in your, in your conference. I shook. They broke down everything. No phone, no registration at the handbag. Um, the world needs more than conference. Yes, <laughs> Are you hearing me? I know you want to look like you're very organized. You know, or you speak all the good English. English can't change people. It's the language of a culture. It's not gospel. Yes. We need Jesus. When we come into the crisis of ourselves, when the storms rise, when the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. I will rise above the storm. When I have a need so intense but I cannot steal, and money is in my presence, even Roger Almighty one she cannot deliver you at that time. Mm, when the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the, the storm. I will be still and know you. I, God, I will be 
still I know you are when the oceans rise when the oceans and thunders roll I will so with you I will so with you above the storm yeah Father you are king over the flood I will be still and know you I got I will be still want to stand with me to preach you can enjoy it stand there second chronicles 13 i want to show you something i'm almost tired of don't worry somebody said when pastor says that that's 40 minutes you won't break down it's because your miracles have started when others are saying that is a casting down not this one so i'm just using it as prophetic similitude you will say there's a rising up for you i'm not saying you will say there's a casting down <laughs> i'm just using you as type and shadow in the fifth year of king jeroboam abijah became king of judah who is king jeroboam jeroboam is the king of the ten tribe nation called israel Habijah is the king of the two remaining tribes who did not follow him called Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. There was war between Abijah and Jerusalem, between two tribes and ten tribes. Habijah set the battle in order with an army of valiant warriors. Because when you are thinking of war, the first thing that comes to you is what type of men do I have? When nations are looking for solutions, they say, how many professors of medicine do we have? How many geologists do we have? We need resource of men. Oh, there's power in resource of men. May God make you one of them. He said the battle with an army of valiant warriors, 400,000 choice men, which means they did screening and some people did not qualify. He said, you. He was, he was guarding his army. Jeroboam also drew up in battle formation against him with 800,000 choice men, mighty men of valor. You have valiant warriors. I have mighty men of valor. You have Hundred thousand, I have it. Hundred thousand. Please, who is going to win? You are too fast. Who told you? Then a just to to the Mount Zerafim, which is in the mountain of Ephraim, and say, "Hear me, Jeroboam, and all Israel." Should you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave dominion over Israel to David forever, to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam A gold calves with Jeroboam has made. What does it say? On our side is the kingdom of God. On your side is great multitude and golden calves that are not God. He said, have you not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron, the Levites, and made for yourself priests like the people of other lands, so that whoever comes to consecrate himself with a young boy, and several rams may be a priest of the things which are not God's. What is he saying? He said, let's check our priests. Our own priests are the sons of Levi which God chose. From the wilderness, he called them his own. He said, your own priest, they are the 
the highest bidders. And the Ben Kowa. Immediately you go to the tr- the altar of Jeroboam and he looks at it. What to Range That Jeroboam, his spirit is still in the world till today. People are building organizations using their five senses. That's how Jeroboam pick his own princess, his own Levi. He said, but for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. The priest will minister to the Lord, and the sons of Aaron, the Levites attend to their duties. They burn to the Lord every morning and every evening burnt offering sweet incense. They also said showbread in order on the pure gold table, the lampstand of gold with his lamp. They burn every evening. For we keep the command of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. Now look, God himself is with us as our head. His priests with sounding trumpets to sound the alarm against you. O children of Israel, do not fight against the Lord your God your father for you shall not prosper. Question I want to ask is this man at a battlefield or is in a crusade? Huh? This looks like a man preaching. Did you hear Jeroboam answer? But Jeroboam on the other hand Caused an ambush to go around behind them. You need to be preaching. There are people who don't, don't value your faith expressions because to them, strategy is everything. When you are saying, oh My God will supply my needs. They come to pastor. Hey, your pastor, are you here? Because that looks like a clear solution. Then, you know, the priest of God is with us. Our God is on our side. His trumpet is here. I'm Jehovah. Look at it. Continue preaching. Some of you, when I'm even speaking to you, that's the way you think. Is it? This man is preaching, but my issues, because you don't, you have put everything in the same basket, you don't know that there are things seen, there are things unseen, there are things eternal, there are things tangible. This guy had 800,000, he caused an ambush to go behind them, so they were in front of Judah and the ambush was behind them. Don't forget Judah had 400,000, Jeroboam had what, 800,000. And yet his ambush was before him. Who will win this battle? When Judah looked around, to their surprise. So was it to their surprise? How many of you wake up sometimes? You have spent all your life in church. When you wake up, you discover the world has moved. Dollar, a loan dollar. Eh? Seven? Ten. You know, I was very angry this morning. Because I was talking to my mother-in-law yesterday and I told her that in my estate, an average, the average price of buying a land in my estate is 15 million. So this morning, somewhere in my mind, I was in the bedroom. Then I was calculating what 10,000 pounds is. Because if somebody gives me 10,000 pounds today, I would not say that he did not try. But I was shocked because I calculated at 700. Okay, what's the response now? Even at 850, 10,000 pounds is 8.5 million. So 10,000 pounds can buy land in my estate. In I was, these are my own meditations. My head just started burning. What? 
So I need close to 20,000 pounds to buy land. Give me the combe. 20,000 pounds? Hey, Nigeria, repent. This greed is too much. Yes, sir. And you got there, you should have 500, 700,000. You don't let God die. But thanks be to God. Our God is in heaven. Ah, our God must be in heaven. That Christ is just sent some melting stone into somebody's mind. Eh? That's why somebody that's still honest. 75,000. <laughs> if you go home and your wife just says, Be careful. And when Johnny Wadada, what is, is the storms that have sent melting to your soul? understand just knowing ten thousand pounds was that gave me some headache i was angry so i would travel and uh, I preach all over the world they would give me ten thousand i would not be able to come and buy land <laughs> if the lord have not been on our side. How many of you know we have to thank God? If the Lord was not been on our side, so some of us, our wives should have left the home. If the Lord had not been on our side, our houses should be scattered. But thanks be to God. Judah looked at her and to their surprise. To my surprise. Now I was surprised. The battle line was at both the front and the rear. Then they cried to the Lord. Some of you just had the statistics this morning that should make you pray. Because I said the Lord. Nigeria will waste your time waste your youth waste your energy and nothing will amount for it but don't worry they cried to the lord the priest sounded the trumpet that's when we are we're about to know why we don't have priests who are bought with money we're about to know why we have a god who is not a golden calf because when storms come it it is the God who answers by fire. I think you hear what I'm saying. The God who is the truth. The men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it happened. It happened that God, my God. I thought somebody would say this. I said, God, where your strength comes to his end, may God step in. This is the bridge between the secular and the spiritual. Jeroboam was secular. He was thinking in numbers. You bring 400,000, I bring 800,000. Jeroboam was thinking in strategy. You are prophesying and preaching. I'm creating ambush. But there was something Jeroboam was not thinking in. He was not thinking in faith. Suddenly, Abijah said, God! And God said, I'm here. Oh, you will call for him. He will say, I'm here. Amen. Before you call, he will answer you. Amen. When you are yet speaking, he will show up. Amen. I thought we say better. Amen. amen. God struck Jeroboam and Israel before Abijah. 400,000 people won 800,000. The hearts are against you, but God is for you. The hearts are against you, but God is for you. The times are against you, but God is for you. You. That nation is against you, but God is for you. God struck them. The children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them. Manda hapayatuga, Avram, Karadu, Baha. May what you are looking for, may 
God deliver it to your hands. There's a difference between racing and running and God coming to deliver something to your hand. It's called on the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen, not it shall be reared. Not it shall be prepared, not it shall be sacrificed, but it shall be seen. Which means God has gone ahead of you to prepare this week your heart as we see the wonders of God you will see it you will just sit down and be observing who is working for me this is not my intelligence this is not my strength this is not my plan. This is my faith. This is my God responding to my faith. God struck them. Abijah and his men struck them with a great slaughter. 500,000 choice men fell slain. <laughs> Look at it. The children of Israel was subdued at that time because and the children of Judah prevailed because they relied who do you rely on do you know why my head is afloat it's not my honey it's what is where I rely on I rely on the Lord God of the Father See, because I said 7 million, 8 million cannot buy, it doesn't mean that my blood pressure has increased. My God, <laughs> I was listening to a testimony of a man of God yesterday, he struck me. <laughs> he went to preach in a nation that was alien and I was antagonistic to Christianity. And he wanted to be on TV. So the, the way to discourage him is that they gave him a ridiculous price to make him discouraged. And they said, we are going to pay this, which was against higher than the prime time. And he looked at them and said, I will pay. He said, after a few months, the program was getting so much of viewership. And they came to him and said, we made a mistake when we made that thing. We re they reviewed it times two. Thinking, they would say, what is this? Nonsense? He said, I will pay. Then they went. And after the third time, they came again. We made a mistake and reviewed it. He was paying what nobody was paying. And he said, I will pay. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it does not matter what is demanded. God will supply it according to his glory. I will pay, I will pay, I will pay. You know, this people say, oh, who spend it in heaven? He's here. He's here. As long as I keep my eyes on purpose, I'll pay. I'll pay because it needs to be done. It's not because I'm trying to show up for anybody. My prosperity is not about the next, the next social thing they want to do in my community. My prosperity is about God's plan. I will pay. My are not going to schools where they will not be trained. I will pay. I, I thought somebody is prophesying to yourself. It doesn't matter. I said, I will pay. My own children will not be in huh? six months as you strike. It's not process. I will pay. The pastor, where? I will pay. Do you know why? Because I rely. I rely on God. The Lord God of my fathers. He was faithful to my fathers. He will be faithful in my own days. Are you following me? He was faithful in Abraham. He was faithful in Isaac. He was faithful in Jacob. He will be faithful to me. Even in my own days, I thought somebody would say, Amen, like thunder. They relied on the God of their fathers. Look at the next verse. 
Abijah pursued Jeroboam, took cities from him, better with his village, Jeshna with his villages, Ephna with his village, Ephraim with his villages. Jeroboam did not recover strength again. In the days of Abijah, do you know why? For the Lord struck him. Your battles are the battles of the Lord. It is the Lord that will rise on your behalf. I said, it's the Lord that will rise on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. You need to know, Jeroboam, the sons of David are different from you. I don't have time. Do you know when God was commissioning Jeroboam? He was a prophet he sent to him in 1 Kings, I think chapter, chapter 11. And the prophet tore his clothes and tore into 12 and told Jeroboam, pick 10. And do you know the prophet was telling him? He said, I'm but I'm going to leave one city because of David. He said, I'm going to leave one more because of my name that you cannot take. He said, and you know what God said to, the, to Jeroboam? He said, if you will walk like my servant David, I'm raising you to join the house of David. But you know the pattern is still David. <laughs> what is he trying to say? At that realm, you can't rival him. Your oppression is a temporal oppression. Do you have time to understand this? Because God already told David, if your sons forsake me, I will chastise them. But I will never take my mercy from them as I took away from Saul. So every time Jeroboam needs to understand, God raised him to checkmate the house of David, not to rival the house of David. The house of David already has an eternal covenant. I don't have to. If you go to Psalm 89, God said, David's throne will be like the sun that abides forever. Let me tell you what, what I mean. Faith will outlive the power of secularism. Jeroboam was raised to create human solutions to bring Israel back to faith. But David's household was the type and shadow of faith. That is where most possible. Do you get what I'm saying? There is no day Jeroboam is going to topple David. Yeah, you didn't get what I'm saying. There could be moments where it will be used to bring David's household to order, but he will never replace them because David's household is standing on something called covenant. I say covenant, and I want you to know where all civilizations rise and fall covenant will still abide it will be like the sun that shines every day you can't break it there is no other name given under heaven by which men will be saved except the name of Jesus Christ somebody say amen, amen. two more scriptures now we rise up are you blessed Zechariah 1 12 to 16 and Micah chapter 4 10 to 13 Oh my God. Faith will always have its place. Occasionalist, power will tilt to Jeroboam. Ten tribes. A workman. A servant. Power will tilt to it. It will create some solutions. But never, God never gave worship to it. Did you discover? The house of God's worship, Jerusalem, God kept it in David. And Jeroboam said, no, 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 no. If I keep allowing the people to go worship, they will go back to their Lord. God said, that's the plan. The plan is that they will go back to their Lord. I'm just using you to chastise them. But he did not know that it was a temporal thing that God raised. He created himself as a dynasty. So what did he do? He created two golden calves and told Israel, don't go there. This is your God. He created the Feast of Tabernacle. Don't go there. This is your own Feast of Tabernacle. He raised his own priests and his own law Levites. Don't go there. God said, oh, you have violated the reason. You are missing it. You are missing it. You are only a whip raised to put them back to place. You are only a whip. But faith is not dead. Faith is alive. My covenant with David is alive. My covenant is alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at this word. I'm true. The angel of the Lord answered me, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against whom you have been angry these 70 years? That's when they went to captivity. And the Lord answered the angel who talked with me with good and comforting words. 
And the angel who spoke to me said, Proclaim, thus says the Lord God, Lord of hosts, I'm zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. I'm, I'm exceedingly angry with nations at ease. For I was a little angry, and they helped with evil intent. Who are the nations at ease? Babylon. I was a little angry with, Bab with Israel. I gave them 70 years captivity. The nations added their own evil intent. Uh, the person that God is going to use to bring you to order should be careful because it does not mean God hates you. He didn't help me. Sometimes God will raise evil people that are not people of faith to put some of you in shape. But they must never forget that God has not left the authority of your life in their hands. Are you following me? Because you are a son of God and that one cannot be broken. Are you following me? He said, they helped with evil intent. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I'm returning to Jerusalem. Someone say, I'm returning. Say, so wherever I've missed God, I'm starting again in the same place. I'm returning. Jerusalem was followed for 70 years, but God said, I'm returning to that same spot. With mercy, my house will be built in it. Says the Lord, a surveillance line will be stretched over, out over Jerusalem. Somebody say, the Lord is returning to me. Micah 4, 10 to 13. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Micah 4. Be in pain and labor to bring forth all daughters of Zion. Like a woman in bath pants. For now. Somebody say for now. Yeah. You shall go forth from the city. God was describing something that is going to happen to them temporarily. They are going to go forth from the city. It was describing Babylon. It was describing captivity. For now you shall go forth from the city. You will dwell in the field and to Babylon you shall go. There you shall be delivered. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Now also many nations have gathered against you who say let her be defiled. Let our high look upon Zion. When they saw the way God was dealing with Zion, they thought God has forgotten Zion. So they gathered. He said, but they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. What where Jeroboam missed it is I didn't understand what God was doing. He thought God was raising him to make David forgotten in Israel. He didn't know God had an eternal covenant with David. They did not know the thoughts of the Lord. Nor did they understand his counsel. For we gather them like sheep to the treasure floor. Arise and trash, O daughter of Zion. Zion that is sent to the field. When he gathers the nations to come and look at him, then he will now tell Zion, Rise, I will make your iron, your horn iron, your hoofs bronze. You will beat in pieces many people. Everybody who thought God is true with you will be surprised. <laughs> I said, everybody will say, oh, the best days are in their past. Their best days, we cannot do with them whatsoever we think we can do. Listen, how many of you remember how God was jealous for you? In time past, fought your battles. He has not given up. He's still fighting your battles. There could be moments where you missed him. And it's as if the, the, the glow of, of, of that exclusive relationship with God is not there. But never forget, God has not forgotten. He that called you has not forgotten your name. He said, when they come, you will beat them in pieces. You will consecrate their gain to the Lord and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. Why did they come and bring themselves into this crisis point? They came to look at Zion, thinking it was defied. The way you will rise. Everyone who came to see the shame of Samson, they did not know they were signing their own death, death sentence. He didn't get it. Yes, God was dealing with Samson, but God was still hearing him. I didn't. Somebody didn't hear what I'm talking yeah. about. Now, don't put everything in the same basket. They are temporal things. Samson was going to lose in the flesh, but not going to lose in the spirit. So Samson said, Lord, let me die here. But if he said, Lord, let me die with them, it means he will leave that body and continue with the Lord he's talking to. But they will die there. So the Bible says, even if your hand is cut off, it is better to enter into life with a maimed body. Now, Samson was a bit maimed, 
But listen, Samson was without, never without hope because Samson was still talking to God. Are you following me? And Samson was negotiating his eternity. And Samson was saying, God, just take me. Just, just let's, let's, let's go. Just let's go. They will say, where they, 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 they will leave a body here that is without eyes. But I would have seen the Lord. <laughs> I would have seen the Lord in his glory. Are you following me, church? You will see the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. So today, I've shown you where the spiritual trumps over the secular. Never forget it. Crisis will show who your God is. I want you to reiterate to God today where your hope lies. Look at some things that secular things are solutions that they've given to you. Qualifications they've delivered to you opportunities they deliver to you things they've answered for you and after you have considered it never put your ultimate faith in them only thank God for them raise your hand and begin to thank God thank God for your job we are trusting that our nation will work but never to the point of replacing our God My God, He's an awesome God. He raised from heaven above with wisdom, the power and love of God. He's an awesome God. My God, He's an awesome God. He raised is that who the Lord is to you? Sing that song one more time. Everybody raise your voice. I sing to the Lord. First Kings 22, 48 and 49. First Kings 22, 48 and 49. Thank you, Jesus. Jehoshaphat made merchant ships to go to offer for gold. When you need to go over the sea, the most important thing to you is the make of the ship, isn't it? Yes, sir. Can they survive the sea? But they never sailed. Have you seen people who have it all, but it never works for them? That something is in your CV does not mean it will work for you. They never sailed. They were wrecked at Ezion Geba. Do you know why? Verse 49. Isaiah the son of Ahab said to Joseph, I let my servants go with your servants in the ship, but Jehovah's will not. You need to know why he didn't say, let me give you 2 Chronicles 20, 35 to 37. What happened was that Joseph was righteous, but he allied himself with the house of Ahab, 
the king of Israel, which was idolatrous. And God warned him. Jehoshaphat was prosperous because he feared God. But he allied himself with the Arab house. We did not fear God. And God showed him. You can have it all and I will never allow to say. May God not stand on your path. Look at how he's placed there. After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, allied himself with Azar, king of Israel, who acted very wickedly. He allied himself with him to make sheep to go to Tashish. And they made the sheep in the Ezion Geba. What happened? But Eliezer, the son of Dodava of Marase, prophesied against Joseph and said, Because you have allied yourself with Azar, the Lord has destroyed your work. The Lord will not destroy your works. The Lord has destroyed your works. So the sheep, not that they were not made, but they were wrecked. They were not even able to go to Tashish. They, they couldn't even start sailing. Because it is when God wants something to work, that it works. Now, I'm not saying they should go and put a paper on the sea and say, that's my boat. Make the boat with the quality wood. But remember, the wind is not under your power. The wind is under the power that is beyond you. He is the one that will determine whether it sails or not. Say, Father, I bring everything I have. All my assets to your feet this morning. All my assets, all my network, every friend I know, every place I know, all the things I have, the qualifications I have, the opportunities I have. Let the wind of God make it sail. That's a very powerful prayer. Let the wind of God make it sail. Let it make it sail. Let it make it sail. Let we are needed. Let me be hard. We are needed. Let the wind of God make it sail. I'm not trusting in my strength, in myself. I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm trying. You are not praying the way I want you to pray. Some of you need to repent from some alliances. They might look like good alliances in the flesh, but they will cost you more with God. And the most important person you need is God. You need to bridge between your secular disposition to life and your spiritual disposition. Who you are with matters. Who is your ally matters. Who is your friend matters. Who is your partner matters. Do they fear God? Don't go put your money in what God has cost. Don't go put your money in what God has cost. It won't work. 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 Salabo Kajan. Lambo Rakaya. Who is praying with me today? Who is praying? 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 They were wrecked. Not because they were not good ships, but because God was not in them. Good plans can fail if God is not in them. Good ideas can fail if God is not in them. Step into my journey. Let the wind of the Lord guide me. Guide me. Let the wind of the Lord guide me. Let the wind of the Lord guide me. Let the wind of the Lord guide me. In Jesus' name we pray. I thought you would say better. Amen. In Luke 23 verse 35. They looked at Jesus on the cross and that was a puzzle. He saved others let him save himself Jonah stood up in the midst of the storm I serve God who made the heaven and the earth why is he not answering you because the question is if our gods are nothing and your God is everything then he should answer why couldn't Jonah call God Jonah too is disobedient. Do you know why it looked like Jesus could not save himself? He had become sin. He was carrying the sin of the world. You don't get it. And at that point, when sin is a burden in your life, you can't lift up your head. Your Jonah will know who is at work, but you will not have the confidence to look at his face. Because if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Jonah 
Jonah couldn't. Jonah knows who is at work. Where is it? They said, praise her. You need to pray me on this. You know, sometimes people expect you to do certain things, but you cannot do it because you know where you have been, what you have done, things you have violated, and you know that you don't have confidence. Huh? But when they dream inside the seat, Jonah said, Lord, is now me and you and you. Some of you, I want to give you moments with God to recover your strength. I want you to recover your strength in God. I want you to recover. I want you to recover and lift and be able to lift up your eyes again to the Lord and be able to say, Father, I'm your son, I'm your child. I know there are places where I've been stupid. I know there are places where I've been wicked. I know there are places where I've been where I've goofed. But Lord, I'm lifting my eyes again to you from inside the belly of the whale. Jonah lifted his voice to God again. Lift your voice to God. Let there be a connection between you and the Lord today. Let there be a connection and let him answer you in the day of trouble. I have no other God. I have no other God. I, I have no other God but you. 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 Lord, forgive this money. Lord, remember mercies this money. I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. I could have despised you. Sometimes I obeyed men and I despise you. And they were wicked men. I allied with men and I despise you. And they were wicked men. But I have no other God but you. Lift my head again this morning. Lift my head again this morning. Roll away every guilt here and let your people find hope and strength again in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus I know it's guiding me in my way I said it's guiding me in my way oh yes I have my certificate but it's guiding it the wind is blowing it's, I'm going in the direction it wants me to go I have friends, I have friends, quality friends, but you know what? It's guiding me in the way. It's guiding me in the way. May you not call the person you don't need to call. There are good people that if you call at the wrong time, you will get the wrong response because you are not being guided by the wind. Because your eyes are on men. It's not because they are not good. It's because they are not the ones sent to you. I want you to release yourself to God and carry me by your wind. Carry me by your wind. Carry me by your spirit. 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 Guide my way. Direct my steps. Direct my steps. Carry me by the wind of the spirit. Carry me with your gentleness. Carry me with your leadership, Lord. Comfort me with your hand, oh God. Comfort me with your hand, oh God. Carry me with the gentleness of your spirit. Carry me with the gentleness of your spirit. Let my let my name be remembered in your presence. Let my plight be remembered in your presence. Carry me gently with your spirit to so where you want me to go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Guide me safely.
shine on our parts. Shine before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength. Save your people. Restore us, O oh God. Cause your face to shine we shall not say. Stand up your strength and come and save. Stand up your strength. Stand up your strength. Save your people. Stand up your strength and come and save. Give ye, give ye, give ye. All Israel, you need. Give ye, give ye, give ye. Give ye. All Israel. Oh, between the children. Oh, between the children. Shine for, 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 shine for. Make yourself known. Shine for, shine for, shine for the in my life. Shine for, you will dwell, you will dwell between the children. You will dwell, you will dwell between the children. You will dwell between the children. Finally, three scenarios of Jonah chapter one. Jonah got to the port at Joppa and paid his fear. Nobody talked about God. Nobody mentioned who you are serving. It's called secularism without God. Number two, when the storm rain came, everybody called to their own God. It's called pluralism. But finally, the final bus stop, Jonah said, I'm a Hebrew. I worship God who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. I'm not calling on any other thing. I know where this thing is coming from. I know who to give my focus to. And do you understand what I'm saying? That's the third spot. And that's when all the secular decisions he has been taking made meaning. It's God that will bring meaning to your journey. Are you following me? I pray for you that your heart will be set upon him. Uh, I say, even in the storm, your heart will be set upon him. So this morning, I ask for the outstretched hand of God to go over every boiling sea and every boiling rivers and everything that is challenging the faith of God's people. In the name of Jesus, receive interventions of the Lord. Let the wind of the Lord carry your ships to your desired heaven. To your desired heaven. Let the Lord take you and answer the desires of your heart. I said, let the Lord answer the desires of the Lord. The Lord God of heaven grant you the desires of your heart. The God whom I serve grant you the desires of your heart. Today we command answers to desires by the wind of the Spirit. For we have relied upon you, O God. Therefore, our answers will come stresslessly in the name of Jesus. We receive it in Jesus' mighty name. And we just say, give the Lord a shout of honor and praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
What is the bridge between secularism and spirituality? Faith, your faith in God. Take your offering in your hands. Take your offerings in your hand. Somebody say, hey, don't go and look for a job. The day you are giving God, don't worry. They will soon see. I labor and I give. Because I know not all my increase is going to come by my sweat. Some are going to come by his favor. I said they are going to come by his favor. Who's going to receive favor this week? Take your offering in your hand and give it to the Lord joyfully and cheerfully. Hallelujah.